Well, let's have conversations, shall we? So, this has gotten an update. A lot of updates, actually. Uh, as you can see, things look a little different. You click here. You can see what uh, dependencies, you know, the Python installer needs. And then you click here and you get access to the Python installer. We're actually going to be using this today because um, I have decided to legacy the scripts, which are right here. Okay, and the reason I decided to do this is because the GUI does everything I need, but they're still here, and if I need to update something in them, I will. I just find the GUI is a little easier to handle for people, you know what I mean? And then we got this little guy here for system dependencies, but that's not the point. All right, we're going to open this up. We're going to paste this in, and I just finished updating this. Uh, its final storyline has commenced. Now, there is an uninstall button. We're going to get rid of everything. It's done. See that? So let's go over some of the changes real quick. Because the changes are important, and I think most of you are going to like them. Those of you who notice, we can now change the DPI. Well, we can after it's done installing. You know what? I'm going to install this real quick. Once again, it's a one-click full and setup. Uh... And what this will do is it'll download all the stuff. You'll notice the progress bar actually tells you what's going on now, and so do the logs, so it's kind of synced. Now, this is Verbrose Madness. I did this on purpose to show you exactly what's going on with .NET, so you don't have to wonder if it's stopped or not, all right? And uh, I hope this helps your mentality. You'll know if it ceases and desists. You'll know where it gets stuck on. And another cool part is we go into .affinity Linux, you should notice, well, normally there would be a, where is it? Aha! It's not in the right location, but there's affinity setup.log being generated for you guys. And uh, as you can see, it's being generated in real time as it updates. So anything that happens here will go into here, and that way... If you do have an issue and it's awkward, uh, you will know and you'll be able to pass that log off into the issue section and see if I'll be able to fix it or not. Okay? What the hell? Is there a Mac version of Line for DMG? Weird. I get asked the strangest things. Okay, so other changes. Uh, it's now going to install WebView 2 by default. So that's needed for something, I found out. I added the uninstall button. We are able to set the DPI scaling, which is nice. I've removed a bunch of buttons because they were just confusing people, honestly. And um, I have set a font automatically that fixes the pixelation of fonts in the UI. So now it's crystal clean and clear. And uh, that's kind of exciting and good, right? Hopefully. Uh, there's actually been a lot of under the hood changes. So can we click this now? So as you can see, you are able to set the DPI scaling. So it's best to keep this GUI around. I might actually have it install itself. Um, and what I mean by that is, so it creates its own dot desktop. And it just basically says not Affinity Affinity, but Affinity GUI Troubleshooter. Or Affinity G Affinity Linux Installer. Right? And it just sits in your menu. Because I think that would be kind of nifty and fun to do. Uh, that way you're instantly able to go back to it. And I can set it so it automatically runs the Python from GitHub. So you'll always have the newest one. Unless you guys would prefer an offline version, it's up to you. I don't know what you would want. But I'm trying to make this entire process as easy as possible. You know, without really having any issues at all. So, uh, yeah. The other change that I made is... If it detects Mint, Ubuntu, or Zorin... It will no longer close uh, the GUI installer. Instead, it will check for the dependencies. If the dependencies are not met, what it will do is it will tell you 
and it will ask you to install them manually because I will not add automatic support for that because I don't deal with outdated dependencies. Um, it's a tad annoying. And then you can hit retry after the dependencies are installed. You don't have to close the installer. And once it detects everything is there, it will install everything for you. The one click full setup will continue. Uh, try to make that easy as I possibly can. Look, it's still going. See this? It always goes for me from, from, it, it's never stopped. Like, I have multiple distros installed. Most people don't know this. I, I have a Fedora based distro. I have a Debian based distro. I have Cache OS, which is Arch. I even have stock Fedora. I have stock Debian. I have stock Arch. And the reason for these is, is because they're the pillars, the building blocks of, Linux. Uh, I even have Slackware installed on an SSD somewhere. I haven't tried it on there. I wouldn't even know where it would begin. It's been so long. I think the last time I used Slackware outside of OnRaid was like 1998. <laughs> That's been a while. Slackware was the first distro. Most people don't know that. And uh, then the next year came Debian and then that same year, a couple months later, came Red Hat. Yeah, it was it was an interesting times back then. Things were fun. You know, you have to do everything yourself. Being a beginner back then was like literally learning advanced mathematics from nothing. Compared to today, everybody today has it literally. It's just so simplistic and easy. It's easier to set up Linux and get everything running than it is to set up Windows now. That's just how it is. With Windows, you have to go into the browser. You have to download your applications and everything else. With Linux, you go into the terminal or a GUI and you just start installing things. Like right now, if I wanted to, if I needed to install something, I would head here. I'd type Discord. I'd hit Enter. And lo and behold, it would populate and I can have one out of a million things that relate to Discord, like the official Discord. Okay? I could have Discord Canary. Okay? And this is what makes Linux so epic is the fact that it has one of these automatically uh, built in in Cache OS. I don't know about the other dish. I think Nabora has one as well. Yeah. Cache OS has like two, I think. I don't know. But this one's better than all of those, so yeah. Uh, still going. We are on core fonts. I leave this here because it's easier to read all smushed. I think it just finished core fonts. No, it's still going. I guess it installs each individual font. So there's Vidiana and everything else. I mean, this goes pretty quick now. Now that you know and you can see what's going on, it's only been eight minutes. Right? So it's like, yeah. It works out pretty well. Now it's installing the thing for OpenCL for AMD cards. Oh yeah, there's a button here to launch Affinity for you AMD GPU users who are having flickering and other problems. It will disable OpenCL, allowing you to run. Pretty cool. And yes, we would like to install Affinity. It will automatically download the newest installer. And once it's done, I'll actually have to adjust that to allow it to download the newest installer instead of the one that's already there. Hit install. It's a very big window. There we go. That's finished. Now it's going to go through and it's going to set up uh, restoring win metadata because, again, the corruption issue. And it's going to install the web view to runtime. It's not a part of Wine Tricks yet. That's the reason that it's doing it. Uh, did, did you know .NET 48.1 came out? I'm going to have to set that up as an installed uh, thing as well. Instead of .NET 48. I think that would probably be a little more interesting. Maybe that one won't fail as much. I don't know. But yeah, this is it. Now this is modified in the reg edit section to not always run in the background. Because I know there's people are sticklers for that thing, you know. I'm going to put this behind my dock. Behind my bar. It's panel, actually. 
So I know someone's going to ask me at this point about my desktop environment. This is using Hyperlint. And this was initially I started this project from N4. Then I decided to start it from scratch because N4 had too many issues. It was all over the place. It was a mess. Okay. Uh, but that kind of burned me out. So instead, when I found Dank Material Shell, I ended up just repurposing it for my own needs turning it into a full desktop environment, being able to do whatever we need it to do, you know, including built-in sound menus, things like this, uh, power, right? It does everything. So we need to, we could set this to auto and it will automatically adjust to the uh, background image. I'll also go up there and change this to match. So it's kind of cool. Here it is. The installer should be finished. There we go. And that's it. So you can go in here. You could set your DPI scaling. I'm going to set mine to 120. Okay. There's a list of common values. And uh, AMD users, you guys can just click this. And it will automatically start up for you. If you have any visual issues. Okay. So if we go into settings and we go into performance, you'll notice that it's not enabled for OpenCL. For you NVIDIA users, you can just click whatever one that you have and you're not going to have any visual issues or any bugs like that because, well, you're on NVIDIA. So uh, NVIDIA is built for more professional-like environments. And yeah, that's the, uh, that's the new installer. That's, that's everything. We've gone over a lot of it. Settings is still an issue. I cannot fix your ability to sign in or sign out. I'm sorry. Uh, once I figure that out, I will update the installer to handle it. Uh, as for your settings, they will not persist. Uh, there is a way to fix it, but unfortunately, I haven't got it to work. So it's not implemented into the installer. I did have a fixed settings button, but again, you know, it didn't work. Now, uh, if you appreciate all this work that I've done, um, subscribe to the channel. It really helps, you know, share the video with people who also use Affinity who wants to switch to Linux. Uh, subscribing, uh, liking the video, leaving a comment. You can check the description for ways to donate if you want. I've got lots of options on the, uh, I don't know if I actually added it or not. But yeah, you can also donate here, Ko-Fi or PayPal. I didn't mean to click my tongue, I apologize. So that will lead to me. There I am. There she is. <laughs> and uh, this will also lead to me. There's my babies. Yeah. So in a nutshell, everything should hopefully work a lot better and be a little more stabilized when doing installations. I like to thank you guys for watching. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. I hope you have all the information that you need. There are things I can't fix and things I can fix. Please try to remember that. Again, subscribe, comment, like the video, donate if you wish. Support me in whatever way you find is best for you, and I'll see you guys next time.